Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. Learn the differences between safety and relief valves. This is an excerpt of an article I wrote for Plumbing and Mechanical Magazine. Each boiler requires some sort of pressure relieving device. They are called either a safety or pop safety, relief, or safety relief valve. While these names are often considered interchangeable, they have subtle differences in applications. According to the National Board of Boiler and Pressure Vessel Inspectors, the following are the definitions of each. Safety valve. This device is typically used for steam or vapor service. It operates automatically with a full opening pop action. It closes when the pressure drops to a value consistent with the blowdown requirements prescribed by the applicable governing code or standard. It is sometimes called a pop safety valve as it pops open fully when the boiler pressure reaches the set point pressure. The relieving capacity is shown in pounds per hour. Relief valve. This device is used for liquid service. It operates automatically by opening farther as the pressure increases beyond the initial opening pressure and closes when it drops below the opening pressure. This valve, used on hydronic systems, will open gradually as the boiler pressure reaches the set point. It will continue opening if the pressure increases. The relieving capacity is rated in BTUs per hour. A safety and relief valve are not interchangeable. Safety relief valve. This device includes the operating characteristics of both a safety valve and a relief valve and may be used in either application. Temperature and pressure relief valve. This device is typically used on potable water heaters. In addition to its pressure relief function, it also includes a temperature sensing element that causes the device to open at a predetermined temperature regardless of pressure. The set temperature on these devices is usually 210 degrees Fahrenheit. The following is a list of common mistakes with boiler safety relief valve installations. Relief valve piping. The relief valve discharge piping cannot be reduced. See International Mechanical Code. 1006.6. .6. By reducing the discharge pipe size, the relieving capacity of the safety valve is lowered and may not be able to safely relieve the pressure inside the boiler, causing a dangerous situation. The code also states the discharge material shall be of rigid pipe approved for the system's temperature. The inlet pipe size shall be the full diameter of the pipe inlet for the relief valve. If using copper, it should be piped to allow for expansion should the relief valve open. Never pipe the relief valve piping directly onto the floor. Copper expands 50% more than black iron when heated. The discharge piping expansion could damage or destroy the relief valve. The discharge piping must be supported, and the weight of the piping should not be on the safety relief valve. Valves are not permitted in the inlet piping or discharge piping from the relief valve. Steam safety valve pressure margin. Be sure to consult the safety valve operating instructions as many require a pressure margin between the boiler pressure and the pressure rating on the safety valve. The following is what Apollo recommends for their safety valve. The minimum required pressure margin for this type of valve is 4 psi. Under no circumstances should this margin be less than 4 psi. Failure to maintain this operating margin may result in leakage past the seat and accumulation of deposits on the seating surface. Excessive deposits may prevent the safety valve from operating properly and a dangerous pressure buildup and equipment rupture may result. In other words, do not operate a low-pressure steam boiler above 11 psi. Installation Read the manufacturer's installation manual, as each may have different requirements. For instance, Apollo requires the discharge piping on their safety valve to terminate with a plain end and use Schedule 40 black iron pipe. The instruction manual for their Model 12 to 14 steam safety valve stipulates you cannot use a pipe wrench to install it. Not sure what they want you to use. The discharge pipe should be plain end or cut on an angle and terminate about 6 inches from the floor. Hydronic relief valve. The following is what WATS recommends for their 174A and 740 series relief valves. 
Important, the discharge line must be the same size as the valve outlet and must pitch downward from the valve to a safe place for disposal. You don't want water resting against the relief valve discharge. Steam boiler. Most boiler manufacturers recommend a drip pan L be used when the relief valve discharge piping rises. The drip pan L is used to reduce the weight of the discharge pipe on the relief valve. It also has a drain fitting which will drain any water in the discharge piping. Some codes require the discharge to be vented outdoors. Testing. I ask the attendees in my classes, how often do you test the relief valves? Most do not make eye contact, and when I follow up with, why are they not tested? I often hear the same response, they will leak. A rule I subscribe to is never check a relief valve on a Friday afternoon. When testing, refer to the manufacturer's directions. For instance, one will recommend once a year, while another suggests twice a year. One manufacturer says, safety slash relief valves should be operated only often enough to assure they are in good working order. I don't know what that means. You also want to verify the proper test procedure, as some manufacturers want the steam safety valve tested when the boiler is at 75% of the rated pressure or higher of the relief valve. For example, when testing the safety valve for a low-pressure steam boiler, the boiler pressure should be 11 psi when testing. Be kind to the safety relief valves as they may save a life someday. And it could be yours. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com has my monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries, and Fire Ice Heat is my company website. I have written 11 books on boilers, and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you can find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective and I hope to see you on the next case.